Hi, this is Victor and Jeffrey again, back for tutorial number four, where we will be going over camera recognition and victim retrieval. So we won't be going over navigation and mapping in this tutorial, since we'll save that as the topic for the next video. I would first recommend everybody to familiarize themselves with the rules of Erebus, and you can find that once again on their GitHub uh, wiki page right here. And so in the simulation environment, you have victims as well as activity blocks, which are the co colored blocks within the simulation. So the idea is you score points by picking up victims and returning them to base or picking up um, activity blocks and returning them to their respective activity zones, which match the color of the block. And you'll notice on here, it gives you the detection colors, which we'll be using later for camera recognition. The walls have a color of 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.33, and the victims are 0, 0, 0. And the color of the activity blocks is set to the actual color that it is. And we'll take a look at that within um, the simulation view later. So um, the points scored for each game object depend on whether it's a victim or an activity block. So you get a point for picking up um, a human victim, and you also get a point for returning it to base. You get an additional point if the victim is a child, which is represented by a smaller victim. You don't get any points for picking up an activity block, but you do get five points for scoring an activity block in it within its respective zone. And the thing is though, at least right now, you're only allowed to pick up one activity block and one victim at a time before having to return it to base. So let's say you're trying to find a victim within your camera view so that you can approach the victim and then collect it. Most of the time, your camera view will be, uh, will be picking up multiple recognized objects in a single frame. So it's your job to kind of iterate through each of the objects in order to find out what you actually want. And remember, the objects can not only include victims, but also walls and the activity blocks. So if you want to get just the victims, then you're gonna have to iterate through each object and check its recognition colors to make sure it's a victim. So uh, to the right here, I have some code that just does that. And to walk you guys through it, in the main loop of the program, all I do is I store the number of objects inside a variable called numobj. And then I also store a pointer to the camera recognition objects, like so. And then I just have a simple for loop that goes through each of the objects. Now, the way we know that the object we're looking at is going to be a victim is if uh, its three color values for its recognition colors field matches uh, the victim color, which in this case, if we looked back on the wiki page, it's just 0, 0, 0. So I have an array right here that just stores the victim color as 0, 0, 0. And what I all pretty much do is down here in this if statement, I have a function called array equals, and I just compare the current object's color with the victim color. And we made a function here for you guys to, to use. And all it does here is take in two arrays, as well as the number of elements you want to compare. And it's gonna return true if all of the elements in the array are equal to each other or it's gonna return false otherwise. And this is actually an array of doubles. So down here, assuming that um, the victim color matches the object color, then that would be true. And then we just print C victim down there. So if I try to run that, And if we bring a victim up close, you can see in the console it starts printing C victim. Now, if for instance you were looking for a particular activity block, then first we have to find out what the recognition colors for that activity block is. So I'm going to run the program. 
posit. And say we were looking at this yellow activity block, for instance. If I go into the scene tree and I look for recognition colors, the color is just 110. So in my program, I can just create a new array called yellow block equals 110. And then down here, I can just have an else if statement where I say array equals objects i dot colors yellow block three and i'll just print c out c yellow block all right so if i build that and it's fine I run that. So now if we move the yellow block in front of the robot, we can see it starts printing C yellow block. And that is the basics of how to iterate through objects to extract the objects you actually want to work with. We're gonna introduce two different techniques to victim retrieval. And these are just gonna be very basic ideas to help you guys get started. One is gonna be really simple and not require as much math, while the other one will be a little bit harder with some trigonometry. So the idea of the first technique is very simple. The camera actually gives you the position of recognized objects on the screen in pixel values. So for instance, if I pull up the documentation, you can see right here, it gives you the position on the image of uh, recognized objects. So this position is gonna be in the form of two pixel values, an X and a Y. And I already have code written here that does exactly that. All we do is, it's very, very similar to iterating through in order to find victim objects, except for after we find the victim object, we save its position in a variable called pause x, and we specifically only care about um, the horizontal pixel. We don't care about the vertical pixel because that doesn't tell us too much useful in information unless you might be getting something related to distance, but we only care about the uh, horizontal pixel for right now. And we have a variable called can width, and this can width, we got it up here and this is the width of the camera you can call a function called cam get width and in order to get the number of pixels the camera is wide and we just save that as a constant int so the idea is we take the camera width divided by two add one to it and if the x position of the image on the screen or the object on the screen is greater than that then we know that um, the position of the object is to the right of the front of the robot. And therefore, we start turning left. Otherwise, if it's slightly to the left of the middle of the screen, then we know that we need to turn right. And if it's roughly centered in the middle of the screen, then we just move forward. And the minus one and plus one is just to give it's kind of a threshold area or like a, a buffer area where you consider that acceptable enough to move forward. And eventually the idea is that once we move forward enough so that we're actually touching the object, eventually the object is gonna get picked up, it's gonna get removed from the simulation and you'll be carrying the object and no longer be recognizing the object. Okay, so let's try running that. And let me just pause it. And for the sake of example, I'm just gonna move it right next to the victim. And we should see it turn right and then just start moving forward. Mm. 
there we go. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our second technique. And this is kind of similar to the first technique. All we're doing here this time is that we're taking the actual physical position of the recognized object and we're using that to calculate the angle that we need to turn the robot as well as using Pythagorean theorem in order to find the distance we need to move forward to collect that object. So we used aspects of the box challenge code we written before except for this time we've modified it slightly so we still use the move forward and turn functions but you'll notice that we also have an additional state to scan for the victim and that's the first state it's going to be the state that the robot starts off in and then after it scans for a victim and it finds one and calculates the angle as well as the distance using arctangent and pythagorean theorem um, it transitions into the second state which is the turn state here it just turns the proper amount that was calculated using arctangent and after it finishes turning it transitions into the third state which is where it just moves forward and then after that it stops okay so i've set up a pretty uh, simplistic example right here there's a victim to the right of the robot and the robot should seek it out and collect it so if we just run this program all right And there you go. So the reason that you need trig for um, the competition is this following scenario. I have my robot right over here and there's a human right here. I need to get my robot next to this human so that it can pick it up and deliver it back to base. Now, if my robot is facing straight up, to get close to the human, I need to figure out how much my robot needs to turn to the right so that it's facing the robot. Then I need to figure out the distance that my robot needs to travel so that it gets right next to this human. So Victor is going to show you how to use the camera, and the camera returns the coordinates of the human relative to your robot. So basically, my robot is going to be 0, 0, and the human is going to be, say, at 5, 10. Now, um, I can actually use a triangle in this scenario to help me get trig involved into uh, this problem. So I'm going to draw the following triangle. This triangle is useful for several reasons. Um, this angle right here represents the angle that a robot needs to turn so that it's facing the human because it's ori originally facing straight. This hypotenuse right here represents the distance that the robot has to travel so that it gets right on top of this human. So this triangle alone has two of the values um, that we're looking for. Next, since we know that this human is at 5, 10, this 5 is the x coordinate and this 10 is the y coordinate. So this distance right over here is just going to be 5 and this distance right here is just going to be 10. So we know a lot of information already about this triangle. So let's uh, plug it into our triangle. This angle theta right here is the angle that we need to turn. X is the side that we're looking for. Five is the length of this leg and 10 is the length of this leg. Now we can actually find X using um, Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So five squared plus 10 squared equals X squared. And then we solve for X and that is our distance um, from the robot to the human, no trigonometry needed. For the angle, however, we are going to need trigonometry. So let's remember our basic equations of trigonometry. So just like in the example problems, um, we're going to have to figure out which one of these three equations uh, that we are going to use. Now, since we weren't given um, this hypotenuse, we're going to assume that we don't know the hypotenuse. So um, while sine uses hypotenuse, cosine uses hypotenuse, Tangent does not use the hypotenuse, so we're going to use tangent. And we're, we're going to make sure that we take the tangent of this angle right here. So that's opposite, this guy right here, divided by the adjacent, this guy right here. So tangent of theta is going to equal 5 over 10. Then, just like in the example problems, we take the arc tangent of both sides, and uh, the, the theta is left alone on the left side. And on the right side, we have arc tangent 
of 5 over 10. And then you just shove this into, the, into your code, and your code will turn the appropriate angle for theta. Uh, once again, uh, the code you're going to need to input, or sorry, you're going to get an output of radians, so you're going to ta have to take this output of what the arctangent function returns, and you're going to have to plug it into this equation right over here. So we're going to take what this returns, multiply by 180, divide by pi, and then theta will become the angle that we need to turn so that we're facing the human. Now one thing to note is, what if the human is on the left side of the robot? When you actually call the camera code, um, it will return you the coordinates, again, relative to the robot. So instead of both these values being positive, uh, the y value will stay positive, but the x value will actually be negative because it's on the left side of the robot. If you keep the negative and plug it into this equation, um, it's going to return a negative theta. So if I take the arctangent of negative 5 over 10, it should return a negative angle for you. Now you know that if your return angle is positive, the human is on the right, and you will have to turn right to face the human. If your return angle is negative, then you know the human is on the left, um, and you have to turn left to get to the human. Uh, otherwise, you could just take a look at the positive or negative um, x value and base your turning upon the sign of your x coordinate. So that's how you use trigonomet trigonometry um, for the Erebus competition. So let's say that you picked up a victim and now you're seeking to uh, place it back at your home base to score an additional point. So how you do that is very simple. If I simulate picking up a victim, I don't have any code running on this robot right now, but if I just move it next to a victim, it's gonna pick the victim up and I'm gonna move it back to home base. Now this home base actually has its own recognition color as you can see right here. So you can actually use your camera to recognize the home base and then return to it once you actually know that you have picked up a victim. So if I move over the home base and you'll notice that it says right here on the scoreboard that I picked up a human, which is plus one points. If I move it back over, I get another point for bringing the human to safety. And let's say you want to do the same thing for an activity block. So let's say this magenta activity block, I pick it up. You'll notice that I don't score any points immediately just for picking up the block. But if I return it to its appropriately colored uh, tile, and if I put it over the, the yellow tile, that actually doesn't work because it's a magenta activity block and each activity block needs to go in its appropriate location. So if I hover over the magenta tile, then the activity block gets deposited and you score five points. So that's pretty much the basics of how to do victim recognition and retrieval. So here we have the Python code um, for getting the recognition objects uh, of the camera. So first things first, we're going to do a from controller import camera. Then we're going to define our recognition color that we're looking for. Um, so remember, recognition colors are a list of three elements. And since the humans that we're looking for are 0, 0, 0, um, that's what we're going to define our recognition color as. Then we're going to do a camera equals myrobot.getCamera um, and feed it its name. Then we're going to do a recognition uh, enable. Now, we don't need to use regular enable because we're not looking to do any OpenCV or any work with the uh, actual image itself. We just want to know what uh, objects that it recognizes. So all we have to do is camera.recognition and then pass it, uh, camera.recognition enable and then pass it time step. Then camera.recognition objects will return a list of all the objects that the camera sees that have recognition colors. Um, so this doesn't only include humans, it includes everything that has a recognition color. And it puts that list into objects. And since we're only looking for humans, we're going to search through objects using OBJ, and we're going to see if any um, objects in there match the recognition color of a human. So 
for each ob for each object inside of the objects list, we're going to do dot get colors, and this returns the recognition colors of this object. So if the object was like say some random wall, and the wall had a recognition color of one zero zero, not zero zero zero, get colors will return a list that is one zero zero. Then we're going to check if this object's rec recognition color matches the recognition color that we're looking for, which is again 000. So if obj was in fact a human, get colors would return the recognition color of humans, which is 000, and that would match up with recognition color, which is what we're looking for. Then it will just go in and print out recognize object. Then we can do obj.getPosition and get the position of the uh, human relative to the robot. Rounded list is just a function that I created to round the values inside this list. Then we're just going to break. So let's put this code into action. So let us load controller. Let me give it this one. Let me hit play. So, as you can see right now, since there are no um, humans in the line of sight, it's not printing anything. However, if we rotate this guy around like that, we move it, let's move a little closer, you can see that it starts printing out the position of the human that it detects. So let's make sure that it's facing this one. And these are the coordinates of the um, human relative to the robot. Now you have to make sure that you keep in mind the negatives. Uh, you have to figure out which side and what direction is negative. So just be careful with that. Play around with it. Um, as you can see, I can tell just from right here that if my human is on the left side of my robot, then it's going to give me a negative uh, for the x coordinate. And if my robot is on the other side, it will give me a positive for the x coordinate. You can see that um, if I move it backwards, uh, it's the last value that changes. So this means that you're only going to need the x and z coordinates. So that is going to be your two value coordinate, uh, your x comma y quote unquote, um, for you to do trig on. And this y value is simply height. But we always know that this object is the same level at the human, so we can pretty much ignore that. So uh, once you have this, you can use x comma z, figure out what direction is what, and then you can perform any trig that you may need on it. So now you should know all the math that is necessary to evict and retrieval. Using Pythagorean's theorem and uh, arctangent, you can find the the angle that you need to turn to face a human and the distance you need to travel to go get that human. Now, since you know how to do victim retrieval, uh, next week's class is going to be about maze navigation. Uh, so maybe right now you have some ideas about how to navigate the maze. Maybe some of you are thinking wall tracing, uh, just tracing the wall following um, the right hand wall. Uh, we're going to go over a little more complicated way of traveling the traversing the maze. So keep your eye out for that. Uh, have a good week and thanks for watching.